Howdy, I'm Butch. I blog at PoseidonAwoke.wordpress.com. And this video is about the cathedral. The term the cathedral is fairly commonly known throughout the alt-right and throughout neo-reaction. My impression is that some people think that the cathedral is some sort of a conspiracy, that it's an evil plot to take over our minds and control mankind. I don't think that is what it is. I think it's a social technology. It exists because it provides competitive advantage to its adherents. And like any tool, it can be used or misused. Because it's a functioning system, it can also be gamed. The cathedral is a self-organizing ideological alliance of the elite, of abstract thinkers. This alliance is made up of academia, media, governments, and business, corporate interests. It is an engine of abstract universalist consensus building and distribution. Humans are social animals, and we organize together into groups for competitive advantage. Larger groups outcompete smaller groups. Humans and primates generally organize along genetic lines. This poses a problem. As the group size grows, genetic distance increases. So how do we scale the group and maintain group cohesion at the same time? In intelligent primates, you can use a memeplex. A memeplex is a set of ideas, abstractions. This set of ideas should create a universal identity. Christianity is such a universalist memeplex. Christians refer to themselves as brothers in Christ. There is neither Greek nor Jew. The dogma of Christianity enforces the idea that the members should ignore racial and ethnic differences and remain united in their religious ideals. The communist ideology maintains similar ideals of ignoring racial and ethnic differences. Communism maintains that all differences are merely socially constructed and must be deconstructed. Global capitalism takes a similar non-racial, non-ethnic view of the people within the nation states. They view them merely as customers within markets or as human resource widgets within the system of production. This is the meaning behind terms such as proposition nation. A proposition nation is a group of people who are united in their acceptance of a set of ideals or a creed ignoring racial or ethnic differences. Throughout the West, the dogma is equalitarian. All men are created equal. The dogma is love, and that which goes against the dogma is hate. To deny the dogma is a heresy. Those who benefit from the group cohesion created by the memeplex will defend it, simply because it is in their intuited genetic self-interest. Heresies are disruptions of the ideological consensus. Because the consensus creates group cohesion, which is a competitive advantage, the system will attempt to reject the disruption. This is the point where we see the Hegelian dialectic as a compromise or integration is attempted. It's really a cost-benefit analysis. If the cost of the disruption outweighs the benefit, it will be rejected. But if the benefit outweighs the cost, it will be integrated into the system. An example of this is when Galileo disrupted the Ptolemaic view of the universe with the heliocentric model. HBD, race realism, and evolutionary psychology are similar disruptive ideas. The system has been attempting to reject them to maintain cohesion, but the benefits to building functional systems outweigh the costs. Thus we see the current scientific assault against the equalitarian consensus. Any memeplex of ideological consensus must be maintained and distributed. Humans learn through repeated exposure to stimulus. The process of distribution of the memeplex through endless repetition is known as indoctrination. We call this endless repetition of the dogma the echo chamber. We can call this by other names, neuro-linguistic programming, mind control, propaganda. In all cases, it's the process of creating reality by chanting in the minds of the adherents. Again, this is a social technology. It's simply a tool that humans have created for the maintenance of our groups. Once the adherents are sufficiently indoctrinated, the reality of the universe is created in their minds. At this point, they have difficulty processing information which is counter to the dogma. The new information creates a painful cognitive dissonance. The modern secular cults label this information hate, while in religious memeplexes, these are labeled heresies or blasphemies. In the alt-right, we call this taking the red pill. The process of overcoming our own programming is difficult. For many, this awakening is a very painful experience. In my opinion, abstract collectivism is a competitive strategy. It allows for group cohesion in large and disparate groups, which then allows the larger group to outcompete smaller, less organized groups. It's most effective in populations with a high ability for abstraction. 
the smarter the population, the more open they are to meme plexus. I believe that this social technology is most beneficial in groups with single ends, meaning that they have a single reproductive strategy. When groups with competitive reproductive strategies are allowed into the system, then they may seek to game the system for their own reproductive advantage. I believe that this is what has happened in the West. We now see the anti-white bias of the left as non-white polities attempt to gain competitive advantage within the system through the notion of white guilt or racism. Racism is an accusation of bad faith, of failing to adhere to the dogma of equalitarianism. Because the notion of racism is simply being used by certain groups to game the system for competitive advantage to the white population, the cost of it exceeds the benefit of group cohesion. In conclusion, the cathedral is a self-organizing ideological alliance of the elite. It is a social technology which exists because it allows for group cohesion in large populations. And this group cohesion allows for competitive advantage. Religions and ideologies are group organizing meme plexes. The tenets of the organizing meme plex can be referred to as the dogma. Ideas which conflict with the meme plex can be called heresies. The meme plex is distributed and embedded through repetition. Smart populations respond very well to indoctrination. The cohesion gained through this social technology can be very beneficial to groups with compatible reproductive strategies. This organizing technology can also be gamed if groups with competing reproductive strategies are allowed to insert their memes into the echo chamber. The charge of racism is such a gaming of the system, and the cost of bearing the charge exceeds the benefit gained through group cohesion. Thus, we see a growing rejection of the notion. And that concludes my analysis of the cathedral. Thanks for watching.